Okay, uh, uh, this chapter is about uh, mainly about the uh, molecular biology gene expression in eukaryotic system. A little bit of archaea, but I'm not going to focus on this. I just know a bit. Uh, that's it. So apparently, uh, your previous class prepared prepared you well for this. I guess <laughs> most of the. Uh, even even the lowest uh, question on this uh, class is uh, assignment 83 percent. So most of you uh, seem to be prepared well for this chapter. So okay, so I'll just uh, going away just to refresh your memory. So uh, in contrast to the operon and tiger gene uh, organization in bacterial genome, most eukaryotic food have introns and exons. So that makes a difference. Right? So, uh, in this case, also the the chromosome will be in nuclear. There will be uh, envelope, separate cytosol and a nuclear, and the mRNA has to be exported to the cytosol for translation to occur. And so, there's a mature uh, maturation of mRNA. Am I uh, jumping ahead? Now. So, okay, let me show you what the yeast genome and human genome look like. Uh, okay, so how many genes do you think uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae have? It's a, a eukaryotic system. So those are those are the basically the yeast genome going to look like. In fact, this is actually simplified version. Those are basically coding sequences. Uh, but we can translate this and look at its proteins, and those will be the protein sequences. So since nucleotide is A, P, C, D, and protein are M, S, P, twenty letters. So from one language to another language, this will be translation. So now how many? Uh, I guess I, I can do a filter. Uh, okay, before I show you, let's do a clicker question. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, and the, the choice will be uh, how many things in each genome will be, say, same or E. coli? Uh, uh, how, how many genes? How many genes? How many genes? In Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is the eukaryotic uh, single cell. But in each, you see basically the algorithm we did in Bio 25. So the same as E. coli, uh, much less. E. coli, uh, C, much more, than E. coli, uh, much less, uh, D, I, I guess that's three is enough, right? Okay. So, all right. So, now how many genes in E. coli again? 5,000. Uh, 5,200 something. That's, 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 that's. So basically, how many things in the will be similar to equal out of 5,000 something? Much less will be 12 or 8,000. Much more, maybe 10,000 like humans. So, right. At least, at least more than 10,000. I'll take 6,000, 7,000. Uh, or 6,000 and 5,000 still in the same. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, 9,000, 10,000 will be much more. So, okay, if I... 7... Uh, 9... Okay, that's good enough. Okay. Let's see. Uh, answer number 2, much less... Really? 
question of if you think the eukaryotic system had much less genes than E. coli? <laughs> kind of surprised. <laughs> That's the most popular choice. Uh, but the uh, number three, two different things, uh, and one thing. Okay, let me show you how many genes in E. coli, uh, in uh, uh, yeast. So, how many of this one? Oh, uh, six, seven, eighteen. Uh, that's actually including the mitochondria genome. Uh, sorry, this one actually including the mitochondria because the I didn't pick out the. Uh, hold on, let me let me see whether I can do a different. Uh, It should be 5,500. I'm not sure why this got 66. But uh, E. coli, this is a strange. Uh, why did I got the. I guess it's 6,000. Uh, 6,500 genes probably is, is a consensus. So let's let's go. how about we, do you have a computer? Let's Google. Maybe I remember it wrong. Uh, 6,500. <coughs> maybe 6,500 is is the. What are you googling? The how many genes in Saccharomyces cerevisiae the body is? Yeah, 6,500 genes is the, is the consensus, or 62 something. Yeah. So it's actually just a, I guess I should uh, put an answer just a little bit more than E. coli, not in, instead of same as E. coli. So, yeah. so, but much less is certainly not the right answer. Much more is also, I should put another one, say, more or less as E. coli. Oh, that's yeah. So it's 6,500 genes, E. coli is about 5,500. So, but how, how many genes in uh, in human? As we actually we did it the last time, it's actually not that clear, and people still arguing about that. Although it's uh, how many genes also depend on how we count it. Actually, so but okay. This is the uh, human genome browser uh, at the UCSC. Uh, so human belong to mammal, and how many chromosomes human have? Maybe 23, yes. Uh, okay, so, but how does the genome organize? You can actually, uh, if you click, you can actually get a glimpse of this. So, this is the one, uh, I just picked a random region of human genome. Uh, so, oh, we actually see a tRNA here. It's, there's a tRNA. Uh, what is this gene? BCO4449. SOB1. Oh, gee. Uh, this is interesting. I just randomly pick a gene, and that's a superoxide deoxygen. Uh, <laughs> some, somehow you guys are supposed to do a final project on this. <laughs> so, uh, that's right, Ariel Harmon. That's. <laughs> <laughs> but you are doing this in yeast. 
<laughs> okay, that's uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> What's the odds on this? <laughs> there will be twenty-five thousand genes in human. I just randomly click on one of the pop. <laughs> okay, but but you you see there there are a lot of dots here. So you, a lot of line. If I zoom in. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, if I zoom in, uh, you will see. Uh, you see, I zoom in SOD one. Now you see all those uh, dark uh, blocks. What 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 do you think those blocks are? Here, those block. Uh, those thing. The small block. What do you think those blocks are? Uh, close, it, except uh, then okay. Then what do you think the thin lines are? Maybe the axons. Uh, okay. Let, let, let me let me pull it. So those uh, so you see this block, long thin line, uh, some other block, uh, then thin line. So the question is, this block. Give you A for axon, B for intron. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this works. It's basically tell you how much uh, human genome is so vast, like an ocean. How many things should be axon? How many? Things should be in charge or non coding uh, Four, five, come on, six. <laughs> <laughs> Just two choice. It's not that hard. <laughs> Seven. Hey, okay, that's good enough. Eight is good enough. Nine, okay, all right. Nine is even better. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. Uh, so both of you, yeah. So so, axon coding part in the human genome is really a tiny fraction. Majority of those are non coding region. So those tiny little blocks are actually axon. Vast amount are just non coding. Part. So to to find the, the coding region in human genome is actually very uh, tricky. Uh, Bioinformatically, it's it's a challenge to find. But we can do this. Uh, in fact, uh, the most uh, reliable source is just to look for the mRNA sequences then align with the, uh, the genomic sequence to, to see which parts are aligned. <laughs> so that's actually the most straightforward method. Yeah. If, we, if we don't have the experimental data just to out of nothing try to predict, that's actually very difficult. Okay, uh, now I guess you have some kind of uh, empirical uh, uh, view of the each genome as human genome. Uh, all right, uh, then the, uh, this again refresh on your memory. Uh, I mean, in the textbook you will see exon intron look like they are same size, but in human genome, it's basically the intron will be much much longer than axon. And in the mature RNA, every axon will come here. Now let me ask you another question. Uh, give you a few choices how, how this one uh, so do that exon intro exon intro exon intro so um, uh, I'm going to put say that uh, the coding sequence CDS sometimes we call it uh, open reading thread open reading thread so uh, so there's one uh, so so one choice is uh, for one thing uh, uh, one option is the operating frame here. 
uh, at red, uh, red at the choice option A. Uh, the other choice, a uh, blue, would be uh, put that down the red. Another operating frame. Uh, uh, which one do you think uh, actually uh, actually makes biological sense? Uh, let me also redraw the, the, the orange part. This is X sum one. And basically, where do you think you can find the protein coding sequences on this part at this stage? It's not accepted. Oh, sorry, I haven't opened it. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Okay. So A or B, uh, which one actually do you think make part? It's actually going to give you a uh, meaningful protein sequence. Cover both inch exon and intron. This part, this part. So this, the intron going to be uh, spliced out. So this part shouldn't code from the intron shouldn't code from. Only the uh, now the first one. If you, if I look at the A, the red one. What this means is uh, this two part code from first. So then when you come to the when you come to the mature mRNA, uh, this part and this part, the basic goes here, this one goes here. This will be a perfect code. But then you will say what there's a lot of things in front of coding thing. What are those things? What are this? What are the, the yeah, I'm basically saying those are the operating frame. But why I leave so many things in front of the operating frame? What are those things? Uh, okay, uh, I'll give you some choice. What are this, basically? And your choice number A will be. Uh, Uh, it's called Ripos, uh, I forgot the, what the acronym of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is a, in bacteria it's called Shan Dagano sequences, in, uh, in, in prokaryotic it's called Riposome uh, initial. There is a four, uh, R something for four letter acronym. Uh, who can find it? <laughs> it's a, uh, well, I guess I don't have to prove this, so I already know this. It, it, it's basically there is also a lot of uh, untrans untranslated, it's regulatory, like a ribosome or anything related. But there's a, there's, a, there's a term for that. Uh, in fact, in 
bacteria that basically, basically the shunt diagonal sequence where those sequences are located. Yeah. So, okay, this is another fun question here, uh, which basically uh, you may expect uh, to see. So, so let me uh, put this larger so you can see it. So this gene, we have three exons. Now, if in theory any exon can be translated uh, into a protein, uh, how any uh, then how many how many protein can this gene generate? Could you repeat the question? Okay. So this gene has three exons. Yeah, so if any of the three any of the three exons can generate a protein, how many protein can this one generate? Three. Yeah, three. So those will be alternative splicing isoforms. Mm -hmm. So there, there will be at least three different ways to splice this gene. If, if each exon gives you a polypeptide protein, there will be at least at least three protein products that will come from this. Now if I ask ask another question again, if any two exons of polydeca 3 uh, can generate a protein. How many protein products can this gene generate? Two. Any two exons of those can give a protein. How many proteins, basically how many alternative splicing isoforms can this gene generate? Two. Try drawing on your paper. Uh, so, Basically here, uh, there are three exons. Any two of those will give you a protein. How many combinations give you? How do we find out? How how are we going to find? Out? We basically list all the possibilities, right? Yeah. Right. So. How, any two of these is actually just the possibility, uh, the total possibility minus any one of that is actually oh. <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> so, so any two, if, if I have A, B, C, right? uh, if I fix A, it's going to pass with B or uh, pair with C, that's A. Oh. Right. And okay. Then I go down to B. B already paired with A, A, so now B will pair with C. Right. If I choose C, A is already picked, B I, so C is one, it doesn't count. Yeah. So it's just three. three. Yeah. In fact, uh, this is basically something called uh, in, in, in two out of three, this should be three. That's basically how it and, and uh, one out of three is also three. So basically, that's the combinatory sample. Okay, so moving along. Uh, well, we kind of, based on the human genome, we can kind of know how sparse the human genome is. Uh, uh, some, some part of the sequence are condensed called heterochromatin, some part are um, loose for active uh, gene transcription. And histone is how the chromosomes are packed. Uh, mitosis and meiosis, that's really the. Well, the bacteria have mitosis. The bacteria have mitosis? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you should. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> it's not good to <laughs> live. Does the bacteria have meiosis? What? Can they can? can does bacteria have meiosis? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. No. No. Uh, the answer is actually great. Uh, some like bacteria. Some can, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so like, yeah. Sorry, that's a tricky question. Uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, so this is, uh, we are basically talking about cell cycle mitosis. This is actually, uh, 
the, our knowledge, everything, most of the things you see in the textbook, the molecular mechanism, cell cycle, mitosis, meiosis, how did those come from? Those are really discovered by uh, budding yeast. The yeast you use, we use to make bread, wine, those things. That, that's actually basically the same, uh, first discovered in well, best characterized in budding yeast. Yeah. So, okay, so what is this? G1. What would the G1 mean? Is that growth phase? Is that the growth phase? It's, it's one phase in a cell cycle. Right after mitosis, so cell in this phase, uh, uh, growth phase, you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Cell become larger in mass, yeah, and prepare for DNA replication. Once, once their size reach certain threshold, they can start synthesize their DNA, replicate DNA. So that's the S phase. And for budding yeast, that's where the buds start to occur. That's what the budding yeast means. Yeah. That means that uh, they start to prepare themselves to dividing. And then you s the bud become bigger and eventually get to split that somatosis. G2 and that's my And the mitosis actually uh, in is it's not symmetrical, it's asymmetrical. This is because uh, because uh, if if mitosis is exactly symmetrical, that means the older cell and the new cell are going to be have the same age, and then the species will not survive, won't even last. <laughs> so after the mitosis, the newly divided cell should be at age zero, right? When the baby is born, they are not going to be have the same age as the mother. If if the newborn has the same age as the mother, our species will be doomed. Right? So, <laughs> so basically, mitosis is an asymmetric process. That <laughs> uh, this is, I mean, the the idea is. Uh, oops, let me see. How do I put the pen? Uh, okay. So let me see. So those those are uh, those dots. The, those dots here, those are supposed to be an uh, oxidative damage in the protein machinery. Oh, geez, uh, I really don't know how to use this. Uh, those dots, those are basically uh, oxidative damage. No. Uh, I guess my head is really shaking here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I should sit outside <laughs> instead of standing. Yeah, I'm actually surprised how shaky my hand is when I see this on the screen. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I should have used it. <laughs> For a moment, I, I don't understand why this thing is shaking. I realize my hand is shaking. <laughs> Let me just do it. So those all those dots supposed to be an oxidative attack. Because see, when you start to use things, then you're going to... You, you buy a new laptop over the years, you will see damage that in the screen. You, your, your phone, sometimes the screen will give right? Over time, all those things also will go bad in a cell. But when a cell generates a new cell, the, the mother cell try to withhold most of the damage among the cell, and the new cell will born free of damage. That, that's, that's the key, key thing. So this is called uh, asymmetric. In, in my yeah, it's, it's uh, so. For well, single cell mother and uh, mammalian mother, high organism, they, they all have the same same uh, try to protect the young. Okay, that's uh, this is actually a fun part. Uh, I think uh, so. How do we now? Uh, you, you, you see the textbook, we, we can, uh, we know, uh, uh, say, a G1 phase going to how long, uh, S phase how long. Uh, in fact, in, in 
flooding is we know uh, in the last 10, 90 minutes or what? 60 to 90 minutes cell can to finish one uh, cell cycle. Uh, the actual uh, M, uh, G2 and M3 is actually much shorter. Uh, those are the times the e, uh, e, uh, cell span is really G1 and S phase. So how do we know those times? Uh, this is because we can synchronize the cell and then that measure the whole population. Uh, in fact, uh, hold on. let me see. Uh, if I click this, what will happen? It should go to the website. Uh, okay, good. Uh, yeah. So, so, so in a uh, psychometric service, we actually can synchronize the whole cell population in different phase. But then, how do we know averaging? So, and then we just actually apply uh, micro array to see everything. When do they express and when when they uh, 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 what when their expression are high, which in this case must be red. Uh, when they are low, it will be green. I like guess. Uh, let me see. Red here is high. Goes down green. Yeah. So so green means low here. Uh, red means high. So this is actually already a two cell cycle. That's uh, 100, how long is this? Uh, eight minutes, uh, about 115 minutes is already finished two cell cycle. That's, so it means one cell cycle is about 60 minutes. And uh, the G1 phase, we, we have a lot of markers. We know how cell cycle are driven, we can just track that marker. And then based on the marker, usually called cycling uh, clean one, it, that's the cell cycling gene clean one. We trace how long that thing will be expressed. That's the G1 phase. The G1 phase actually is finished in almost just 14 minutes. And then the, it must be the S phase. Then. It's good. Uh, this must be clean one. So. G1 and it's, it's degraded in other phases. So, if we have time, we may, we may do some uh, exercise on this, but right now, let's just leave this. Okay. So, uh -huh. uh, some other things we can, one thing I, I, I may be just found it interesting is also the telomerase. Uh, this is in bacteria, the, most of the genome is circular, so once it starts to replicate, it has no problem. Right? But in, in linear chromosome, then we have a problem now. So because you think that DNA always synthesizes from 5' prime end to 3' prime end. And, so, and DNA doesn't synthesize from nowhere, just in the middle of the air. You have to have a template. That means at the, at the end, at the end of this, uh, there will be one strand doesn't, for example, here, uh, three prime and five prime. This is the five prime lagging strand. If I want to uh, synthesize the five prime lagging, so I need a primer. But if I put a primer here, then I cannot synthesize this strand. It's just too short, right? So, so for the linear chromosome, the end will not be replicated. Uh, that's become a problem. So. I mean, for human work, it will live usually at least, hopefully, average lifespan in the U.S. probably 60 or 70, so how many cell generation goes, well, it's going to be pretty long. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to start to do that from this point, and shorter and shorter. That's become a problem. Right, so, so the cell use telomerase to, to actually try to uh, make sure that end is always there. And how this one is not uh, I, I really uh, remember this one because the, the telomerase got Nobel Prize in the year I studied at the <laughs> So when, uh, um, uh, at my first semester at Spelman, I was actually uh, also r roughly also discuss this telomerase and telomerase got Nobel Prize. <laughs> so so uh, who got the Nobel Prize for telomerase? I, is it a male person? Is it a male or female? Male. 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 
I guess if you ask, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I ask you this, I cannot give you a hint. Most of Nobel, yeah, most of Nobel Prize winner are male, but uh, the one of the person got the uh, Nobel Prize for telomerase is a female uh, scientist at UCSF. It's called uh, Elizabeth Blackburn, and who is also the East biologist. Okay, so oops, uh, I suppose to show you a YouTube uh, YouTube video there. So it's actually uh, if you think about how can how can a uh, cell figure out a way just to put a, a sequence out of nowhere to the end? The, the, the cell does figure out a way to do this. Uh, oh, there's a, I forgot to turn on the sound. Sorry. Uh, can only proceed in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and requires a primer. It is not possible for a DNA polymerase to replicate the 3 prime ends of linear chromosomes. If this problem were not corrected, chromosomes would shorten with each cycle of DNA replication. The addition of telomeric repeat sequences by an enzyme complex referred to as telomerase assures that this shortening does not occur. Telomerase is a unique and interesting enzyme because in addition to having DNA polymerase activity, it also contains an RNA sequence that provides a template for the synthesis of telomeric repeat DNA. Part of the RNA sequence hybridizes with the single-stranded overhang on the DNA strand, leaving a single-stranded overhanging RNA sequence. The repeat unit shown here is from Tetrahymena, which is a model organism used in telomere and telomerase research. The DNA polymerase function of telomerase then synthesizes the DNA strand complementary to the RNA found in telomerase and subsequently translocates to the end of the newly synthesized strand, and the process repeats itself. Many cycles of repeat can occur. Once telomerase has completed its function, DNA primase synthesizes an RNA primer near the 3' prime end, and DNA polymerase fills in the vacant region. A short region at the 3' prime end will remain single-stranded. The end result is that telomerase will have added many repeat sequences, from a few dozen to several hundred. This prevents chromosome shortening. Okay, yeah. so, so the basic idea is the you still need a primer, but the primer now is basically carried on by the telomerase itself. So it's almost like a, a stamp, a, a DNA stamp, you just put it on there. Uh, it didn't actually violate how DNA replicated, it just because <laughs> how to put an extra primer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, another goal, that's basically the spindle of those things for mitosis. Uh, Splicosome, uh, we kind of uh, mentioned this. Uh, so mature RNA have a five prime cap and poly A tail. Uh, that's actually basically the same example we have uh, Okay, Okay, uh, RNA polymerase two is the one actually translated protein. So uh, RNA polymerase three for RNA, uh, RNA TNA, RNA polymerase one for two large uh, subunit ribosome RNA. So the ribosome actually basically is a large portion of protein translation. And one of the key parts in e product uh, transcription is the part of box. Uh, okay, now let's do some exercise. Right. mRNA will form a hybrid. Okay, let me turn on the portion. So although the DNA have two strands, only one strand actually makes sense. 
with regard to protein sequence. So one source generally used to translate that's called sense coding, coding stream. The other one is just complementary to deep sequence state. But mRNA can only hybridize with one of them simply because the sequence is specific. There is a complement, uh, not complement. If it's the same, so mRNA translate uh, the sequence will be exactly the same as the uh, complementary sequence, and it can be base pair with the sense strand. That's basically it. So let's see. I see six response. Most of them choose E. Image. Oh, okay. and this this is what you choose. So probably one one C, and most of you choose E. Uh, the actual answer should be D. Oh, D is correct. So, sorry, A, B, C, D. Sorry. <laughs> it's actually five. Sorry. <laughs> That's correct. Thank you. Uh, I was, at the moment, uh, for a moment, I was really <laughs> sure. <laughs> sorry. It's actually five answers. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, okay, this is another question. That's good. Uh, This one is wrong, so you choose the one in the wrong. This one, I guess, we uh, Oh, this answer is subscribed all over the place. Uh, I guess we can, uh, so, A, B, A, B, most of, but active gene in U chromosome, the active gene, that's actually, A is actually correct, uh, so it shouldn't be A. B has a on something such as RNA gene. It's not in our vector synthesis of RNA. Uh, I, I just got this question online, so this probably uh, requires some knowledge of other things I, I'm not aware of. These are different. So C is also correct. C is to be done. We, we have three polymers. So C is a cancer is correct, so E is down, so uh, it's just B and D, I'm not sure. Splices from stimulus mm -hmm. since have an intron contained mm -hmm. between them. Mm -hmm. B, B seems to be the most possible. It's basically asking RNA gene to regulate synthesis of other genes. So I'm, I'm not sure of the actual correct answer, but Looks like a B is the most possible one. Is it B? B is the most possible one. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a this is a fun question. I just gave you X X. So a gene can have four exons. Any three of them can be returned in mRNA. How many different protein can this gene generate? So four exons. Pick any three of them going to work, and how many can we pick? So you can, I mean, if you're not sure, you can also draw on the uh, start to draw. Yeah, yeah. So we have one, two, 
three form. So any three of them going to work. So we pick, uh, pick let's pick number one. We can pick two, three, number one, uh, two. Then we fix two, right? Four. So and then we still fix this one. We can have three. Uh, Four. four. This is still work, right? If we pick one, pick four, then it's not going to work. So we have to move to two now. If we pick two, three, four, it's going to work. Okay. Then we cannot pick anything else. Right? That will be, you pick three, that's less than three. So how many we have here? One, two, three, four. Is it? So basically, this is something called. Uh, uh, three on top of four. This should be effective form. Uh, the formula, uh, there is actually formula to calculate it, but this is the uh, Okay, let me see what. Okay. Yeah, most of you pick four. Right? It's four. Yeah. Most of you actually also pick four. Okay, now which sequence A and B, which one can form a helping? So the idea is uh, we can have a uh, basically first let's look at the the second sequence. Uh, so A. Oh, I don't think I'm going to demonstrate my steady hand this way. Okay. <laughs> uh, ah, no, I can't even erase it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is funny. <laughs> so okay, the the basic idea is this: you need to find out which sequence has an inverted repeat. The way to do this is called dot plot. So I have a. So let's put look at the second sequence: A G A T T. A C D A G C T A A T C T E. So that's <coughs> five prime, three prime, and then you just you can write it, write it uh, vertically. A T A T A uh, C T A. Oh, it goes down T C T. Uh I'm going to draw a few lines. So uh, uh, because uh, we are only interested in whether the sequence is going to pair to the end so I'm going to ignore the fr uh, front part. So Uh, 
So this is a, uh, uh, the back, uh, the, 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 the end of the sequences. So I'm going to look at A and T going to base pair. So I'm going to put a dot here. Uh, G and uh, G and A is not, so that's not. A and A is not. T and T is not. T and C is not. Uh, but A and T is okay. Let me, A and T is here. Uh, and T is here. Right. G and C is here. Uh, A T. T A T A A T Okay, so this is my front part. Now what do you see here? What do you see is a line? How can a line form like this? Right, so every dot means a base pair. If it form a continuous line, this means this two sequence form a continuous base pairing. If I invert it, that's basically the, this is called dot plot. Once we plot it out, you can see where the base pair occurred. And it's inverted uh, base pair. So this one. A, uh, if, I, if I flip the sequences, this part and this part. And this is 3 prime n, this is 5 prime n. I, I put it up, so a and t is going to be this pair, c and g, a and t, a t, a t, and then it goes up. Right? So this is, they say, inverted repeat. And I mean, you can actually read the sequence, try to figure out in your mind. But if you if you just want to do it methodologically, you can do it this way. Find out this. Okay. So uh, this is this question. Deep, you need to have a very clear mind to see this. It's quite straightforward. Once you you your your heart is pure, your mind is calm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. That's a tRNA. That's an anticoagulant at the bottom. Which amino acid will this tRNA carry and put on the mRNA? Put into the protein. Which I mean, you need the genetic codon, right? So, but you, you can look at the genetic codon and find out. That's the, what the, the key is really the anticodine here. Uh, my the point. But and you see the 5 part n is here, 3 part n is there. So this is 5 part n, not the 3 part n. So if I. Basically, this is this is five from n. I go here. That's five from n. That's a three from. Right. And you just need to figure out the anticodon going to pair with the codon, right? So there should be a codon at the bottom on mRNA. 
it's going to pair with a codon, and that codon going to lead to a protein, an amino acid. And basically, the question asks, what is this amino acid? So that anticodon at the bottom. Does that say CGT? I can't see. That's the question. I can't see if that's what it says. Oh, 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 I see. So here is C. This one is G. This one is G, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's see. Have, have, you, have you made your decision? This is how the law in the cell, in the translation law, going to work. Uh, unfortunately, this law is already predetermined. You voted, uh, I guess you so. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let's see. Okay, so so most of you voted uh, number one. A uh, few of you to choose the uh, second and the uh, last one. Okay, let's work the things out. So, how is this one going to base pair with the coda? So. TNA MI is still going to follow the base pairing rule, right? Mm -hmm. right so C, G is going to base pair with C. C, C, C is going to base pair with G. Now then the next question, which one is 5 prime A? This should be 5 prime A. This should be 3 prime A. So my codon should be GCC, not CCG. Uh, what does GCC stand for? I don't think that's the C. 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 Yeah. So that's basically it. So it's, it's, the, the key is really the direction. Every base pair should be, no, every helix is anti parallel. Five prime. The, if this one is five prime, the other one should be just reverse. So yeah. Okay. So this one should be, I guess, I don't think that. I guess. Uh, I, I don't, I don't remember the genetic code. I I will also give you the genetic code in, in the exam. But I do know some professor remember the genetic code. <laughs> it's like they they can do translation on board. I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, according to them, it's actually easier to remember that table because it's very regular. A few spots are irregular, but most of them are quite irregular. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Uh, another part is the RNA interference. Uh, I didn't prepare the, uh, but RNA interference is actually uh, amazingly. When I was in graduate school, people don't even believe that is true. They think it's an artifact. So, but now it's actually got Nobel Prize. No one questioning it anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so clearly written in textbook. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I remember when, when when paper first came out and we have discussion. The the professor in my group totally dismissed the finding. <laughs> it's actually funny now. <laughs> it's written really in the textbook. And the first paper when they, when they sent to a cell, it was sort of rejected multiple times. In the end, we published because some uh, big name put their name there somehow. <laughs> Had some problems to get it published. But the RNA interference, the basic idea is uh, in, in normal cell, we shouldn't have double strand RNA. So once a cell sees double strand RNA, it's supposed to, be, to come from viruses and cells are supposed to cut it. Right. So, and then we can use this. Uh, in, in, as it turns out, cell also use this as a mechanism to regulate its gene expression. Uh, and some of the key names are Dicer and the Risk. I don't know who come up with those names. <laughs> That's what those names are. <laughs> Dicer and the Risk. That's the two <laughs> names of the gene uh, here. Yeah. So, okay. So they ask, uh, uh, this, I guess uh, the, the normal function involves the microRNA. Uh, so microRNA 
uh, bind uh, 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 can be used to when they target the mRNA, they can either block translation or they can lead to mRNA degradation. So I didn't I didn't come up with a quiz, but that's the summary of this. So this chapter is, uh, but as I said, most of you did pretty well on assignment. So you seem to uh, <laughs> that four-year education seems to <laughs> make a difference. Here. So compared to the bacterial, one, this is a uh, substantially high. <laughs> that one. So, uh, yeah, those are basically the main uh, uh, main concepts. Yeah. Intra-exome, mR mRNA structure, nucleosome, mitosis, meiosis, telomere. Uh, RNA splicing, RNA, I, I, I didn't come up with some uh, problem set on RNA, yeah, maybe I figure out with that. So one thing, one thing uh, in practice is we, we, you can design an RNA to, to basically knock, knock down energy in the genome, yeah. but that knockdown is temporary because RNA is not in the nutrition, it's not inherited, so it's a temporary outcome. That's something, uh, but on, a, on the other hand, if it's a gene deletion in the nucleus genome, then it's an inherited uh, outcome. That's a difference. I tried to come up with that question, but it uh, didn't work out. <laughs> but that's something I want to come up with, but you know. So since you are still here, I'm going to tell you uh, <laughs> So, so, so I'm, I'll probably put in them something like uh, give you a difference uh, RNA uh, knockout and a, a gene deletion knockout, and then in the second uh, in the second generation, I give you a phenotype. Uh, let's do this. Uh, something like this. So, with the uh, cell line uh, in petri dish, I have a cell line. Uh, this uh, this thing uh, this thing is uh, say a resistance to some cancer therapy drug. So let's call that X resistance. Uh, and then uh, let's let's say we design the RNA R experiment. Is that uh, double strand RNA uh, specific for this gene uh, targeted here. And I, uh, so this, uh, and then this, uh, this cell, the cell now should be X sensitive. After I add this, the cell now becomes X sensitive. So that this resistance is a sensitive. So I grow this, say, uh, uh, for 10 generations. 10 generations later, 10 generations later. It's like a movie, say, 10 years later. <laughs> so, and then uh, I'm going to ask you, say, A, is the cell still resistant, or B, is the cell still sensitive? Uh, uh, okay, so let's say there is a gene responsible for some uh, drug, and when the gene is there, it's the, the cell will be that miracle drug is resistant, it doesn't kill the cell. The cancer cell is X resistant. But if I use double strand RNA, or if I put RNA, design an RNA probe, knock down this gene, use RNA I, and the cell going to become uh, sensitive. Right? I basically delete the expression of this gene. Right? So then I can do some study how this gene function. I have dis destroyed this gene. Then I let I, then I went on vacation. I leave the cell the incubator. After ten generations later, and my technician still keeps feeding the cell. The cell is still growing. 
after 10, 10 generations, I come back and say, oh, I don't want to do experiment again, but is the cell going to be resistant to X or sensitive to X now? Uh, who says resistant? <laughs> who says sensitive? Remember, the RAI is temporary. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, no. RNA is temporary. It's uh, not, once the cell to oh, so divide, so RNA is not going to be inherited. Okay. Right. So, so it's going to be uh, the gene will, will, will be turned on mostly in the next generation. Sometimes when the probe is very stable, it can be, when they divide, it can still have some residue in the next generation. But then you s divide again, split again, it most likely will be just too diluted. Uh, so most likely it's going to return to the wild type. Okay, keep that a secret. Don't tell any people not here. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, try to come up with question like that. Probably two or four or something. Okay, uh, what time is it? Uh, oh, I guess you won't keep out the secret because I was going to post a video online. So. I guess, <laughs> but the good thing is if someone actually watched the video online, they will know that. <laughs> so, okay, I'll uh, see you next week. <laughs>